Hey guys, Desolator Magic here, and a quick explanation about today's spoilers. Um, so far, people have noticed that I've had an overwhelmingly positive uh, review or reaction or whatever to Throne of Eldraine, and they're like, oh, I'm, I'm glad you changed. I didn't change. They finally printed a set that doesn't look like garbage. Okay, there's this wonderful thing that I'm going to deem the Wizard's Cycle. They spoil a card, uh, Aetherworks Marvel. Me and everybody with their head screwed on straight says, this is game ruining, this is crap, free casting is inherently broken, this is going to be a problem, I guarantee it. And then it ruins tournament after tournament after tournament because all you can play is energy. Three color or four color energy, that is the only thing that will win. They release set after set after set after set, and I don't mean that as a saying, I mean literally four sets. All of them sell like crap because nothing can beat energy and free casting in Marvel decks. Uh, they pretend to solve the problem by banning Emrakul. Exactly as the entire community predicted, people just go on to free cast Ulamog with it instead. So this entire 1.3-ish year cycle, the community knew better than Wizards and was screaming at them to fix it, and then screaming at them when they failed to fix it, then finally they banned the card just in time for rotation. And then it was a Control-A-Thon or Red Rush shit show, because they were a year late to ban Chain Whirler. Okay, that's the wizard cycle, where we see a card like Scarab God, and everybody who knows what they're talking about says this is almost guaranteed to be problematic. Why the hell did they print something this toxic? And as far as me deeming cards that bad, I have about an 80% accuracy, which is not 100%, but it's pretty damn good. Let's just put it this way. It's better than the wizard's R&D department, don't you think? So what everybody's saying, oh, Des, you've changed your mood and attitude in the way you do these videos for Throne of Eldraine. No, Throne of Eldraine just doesn't look like a dumpster fire. Oh, and here's the, the fun little place I'm going with this intro. Until today's spoilers. And I'll be honest, there have been a couple in the last couple groups where I'm like, okay, this was stupid. They're playing with fire. This could be problematic. This could resurrect a, de resurrect a deck archetype that people don't like. It's oppressive, it's not fun, and it pushes creativity out of the format. You have to needlessly build around it. I don't like it. This is very dangerous. It might not be a thing, but it might be a thing, and I'm disgusted by the fact that they would ever approve a card like this. But nothing has been as unbelievably bad as Marvel or Scarab God or a couple others. Carnage Tyrant, Chain Whirler, Steel Leaf, Search for Ascanta, Cryptolith Rite... Where you just look at it and you just know. You can peer into the future and say this is going to be a disaster. But today that all changes, so let's start with Sundering Stroke. So it's a 7 cost red sorcery, and um, I think they forgot to make it mythic because, yeah. Uh, Sundering Stroke deals 7 damage divided as you choose among 1, 2, or 3 targets if at least 7 red mana was spent. <laughs> at least 7, I love that. So if exactly 7 mana was spent... <laughs> To cast the spell, instead, it deals 7 damage to each of those three chosen permanents and or players. Uh, red decks don't have 7 mana. That's my review of this card. Next, Grumgully the Generous. Always generously offering you some glowing mushrooms. I would stay away from that. Uh, so he's a legendary creature, Goblin Shaman, 3-3 three, three for 3, and uh, each other non-human creature you control enters the battlefield with an additional 1-1 one, one counter on it. Don't let additional throw you off. It starts with a 1-1 one, one counter on it. So, okay, another just tribal boost. It's the same as a passive 1-1, one, one, except not retro-effective, so a little bit weaker, and he can be hit with, I don't know, 3 damage spell, whatever. But guess which direction we're going with this wonderful archetype. Ferocity of the Wilds. It's a 3-cost red enchantment. Attacking non-human creatures you control, get plus 1, plus 0, and have trample. What the hell were they thinking? So non-human creatures is now an archetype. That that's that's a tribal now. The problem is it can be anything. And we're gonna have five sets legal. So when you've got, oh I'm gonna play fairies, oh I'm gonna play knights, I'm gonna play humans, I'm gonna play nobles, I'm gonna play peasants, I'm gonna play goblins, I'm gonna play absolutely anything other than humans. Hmm, who has the bigger uh, pool of, of cards to choose from? This non-human bullshit is gonna get completely out of control almost exclusively because of this card right here. Plus, the Goblin Shaman I just showed. So they made him legendary, they forgot to make this one legendary, or rare. And uh, the flavor text starts with knights. Let me stop you right there, this does not go in a knight's deck, those are uh, knights in the artwork. Of course it does say knights who excel in tournaments sometimes underestimate threats beyond the realm, so they're obviously referring to the knights being the target. But uh, yeah, this is not going in a knight's deck, those are mostly humans. 
So next up, Mistford River Turtle. And it's a 1-5 for 4. And when it attacks, which, I mean, really a 1-5, another target attacking non-human creature can't be blocked this turn. Now see, that could be lethal if it's big enough. Unfortunately, the non-humans deck is going to be a very blitzy deck. It's going to be like Boros right now. So you really don't have time for this. I mean, maybe a sideboard card, but really, you really, really don't have time for this. Next up, Barge In. It's a one-cost red instant. It's a common for some reason. And target attacking creature gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. So nothing new. There's like five of those in white right now. But each attacking non-human creature gains trample until end of turn. So everything on your line gets trample. And then whatever you actually targeted gets plus two, plus two. That's pretty darn good, especially for one, because that really should cost two. It's also instant speed, which this very much should have been a sorcery. Whenever you add that much power plus trample, you have to give your opponents enough time to actually respond, or one mana will be game-ending. They could kill you with one mana. That's just stupid. Plus, more fuel for the fire on the non-humans deck. Then we've got Red Cap Raiders, which are, by the way, not humans. 3-2 uh, three, for 3, whenever it attacks, you may tap an untapped non-human creature you control. If you do, it gets plus 1, plus 1 against Trample until end of turn. That is not worth it in almost any combat scenario I can possibly think of. If you need plus 1, plus 1 in Trample so badly that you remove another attacker from the pool of potential attackers just to deal maybe 1 damage on an overflow, you've already lost. Next up, Lock Dragon. It's a uh, four cost hybrid 3 2 flyer. And when it enters the battlefield or attacks, you may discard a card if you do draw a card. Oh, good, a combo enabler. Good thing it's only three damage in the air for four, which is not that great considering it doesn't do anything else. Now, it'll get you to the cards you need. So, in like a boosty boost deck where everything's, you know, instant combat ambush, okay, but a four cost that doesn't hit for four is not really what you would look for for that deck. Next up, Mirror Maid. It's a double blue triple cost enchantment and a rare. You may have Mirror Maid enter the battlefield as a copy of any artifact or enchantment on the battlefield. So still got to comply with legendary rules. You can target your opponent's stuff, but it can't copy a creature. I don't think I've ever seen anything like this. I'm sure it exists in the game, but not in standard recently. Everything else was, oh, any target or any target creature or, you know, only yours. This is pretty cool. The problem is the fact that you can only run four of in a 60 card deck is one of the great equalizers of magic. So if it's something really toxic, like um, an artifact or an enchantment, I believe they both exist, that you pick the tribal and it gives them plus one, plus one. But okay, at least you're not going to draw multiple because God knows Wizards isn't going to make it legendary. But you're not going to draw two of them. Oh, wait, Mirror Maid. The good thing is it's double blue and it's in blue. Okay, there aren't many tribal decks in blue right now. In fact, I don't think there are any, well, fairies, but... I mean tribal decks that do actual combat damage. And that's the tip of the iceberg. This can clone any artifact, any enchantment, any deck, yours or your opponent's, plus the three sets we haven't seen yet that are coming out prior to rotation. This is just like a ticking time bomb of problematic carditude. As much as I love cloning stuff, I love it because it's degenerate and wins games. Not a very good reason to love it. So this is very potentially problematic. Next up, Iron Craig Feet. <sighs> Just, why? Why would you even attempt to put something this stupid back into the game after looking at the ban lists and restricted lists for multiple formats? So, Iron Craig Feet... It costs triple red plus one, sorcery speed, rare, adds seven red mana. So you pay for and get seven. If that sounds pretty messed up to you, it is provably in the game. Like I said, look at the ban list. You can cast only one more spell this turn. Good, because this is a storm card otherwise. In all likelihood, it's just going to be the second to last spell you cast before you blow their ass off. By the way, it says cast, not clone another version of this onto the stack, or clone something else onto the stack, or cast another spell then clone that on the stack. You know, all the crap is it does. They're going to have to ban this. I'm telling you right now, they are going to have to ban this card, specifically. I mean, did they not know that this mechanic of free mana for doing literally nothing might just be ha 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 playing with fire, right of flame, banned in modern? Seething Song, 
Banned in modern. I right now I'm too lazy to show these on the screen. So seething song, instant, red, triple cost, add five red mana to your mana pool. Banned in modern. Why? Because giving somebody free mana for doing nothing is pretty much right up there with free casting. What was the number one major reason that Wizards said they banned Amulet Bloom? Too much mana too early. So Seething Song and uh, Rite of Flame, I feel like there's another one, I just can't see it. Um, they were banned from Modern because of Storm, if I'm not mistaken. I could be, but I'm pretty sure that's why they were banned. Probably some degenerate combo decks too, but mostly Storm. So they do nothing, they count as a spell on the stack, and they count as a spell for Storm, and they count as a spell in your graveyard. Oh wait, I'm describing Is it right now in Standard. The whole guild. All of their major mechanics I literally just listed off as being problematic and already banned in Modern. Oops! Fine, maybe they'll be stupid enough to not ban this and they'll ban Ral because he's older. Maybe they'll finally ban the stupid Drakes because that Drake's deck can go back to hell as far as I'm concerned. So that restriction, cool. Storm in Modern is partially protected from this god-awful degenerate shit card. I feel so safe now, sitting here not playing Modern. Who designed this card, looked at it, tested it, and said, this will benefit Standard. This will make Standard so much more fun to the point where we have to burn a rare slot to print this. Did they even playtest this with an Izzet deck? I would love to listen to Wizards of the Coast staff tell me why they thought that this was an appropriate card to print, why it was a good idea, why it's not inherently dangerous and incredibly stupid. And don't get me wrong, maybe that deck won't be competitive in the meta and we will never see this and it'll be a 25 cent bulk. Even if that happens, I'm still right. And that's what people don't get about this. There could be a card that says if you control three dragons and cast this for zero, you win the game. That is so screwed up. But if there are only 12 dragons legal, they're in five different colors and none of them have any kind of like evasion hexproof or anything, oh, and they all cost four and up, the card is still overpowered and broken, but there's no deck to put it in. It doesn't mean the card isn't overpowered and broken. It just means it didn't find a deck to put it in. You need two things for a card to completely ruin standard. One, the card has to be broken degenerate shit. And two, you have to actually find a deck to build around it. If either one of those are missing, it doesn't mean that anybody's assessment of the card was wrong. It means that just by sheer coincidence or what else is popular in the meta, you couldn't pull it off. Plus, Archangel of Ties, people saw that card and they're like, what is this card? And then over a year after it came out, it finally went into a deck. It finally found the perfect deck to be played in. And the thing hit like 15 bucks. It was considered $1 bulk crap for a year. And all I heard for that entire year was, ha, ah, Des, you're so stupid. You, you, you assessed it wrong. You said this card's overpowered and nobody's playing it. You're so wrong. You don't know how to read cards. And then when it finally found a perfect deck to, to show off how unbelievably broken that card is, I shoved it in everybody's faces. So let me just warn you, don't be a dumbass saying, no, this card's not actually good. You don't know how to read it. You're so stupid. You're just going to look like an idiot eventually, in all likelihood. And even if it never finds a deck for a year and a half and rotates out, I'm still right. Remember, in years past, I bought fifty dollars to $100,000 worth of Magic Singles and knew when to sell certain ones, when not to, and when to rebuy 100 copies of them on various websites. When you've got that much money on the line and do it for a living, then you can come tell me that you're as good at assessing cards as I am. Not to mention my entire background in programming and mathematics. So I would strongly suggest that people looking like complete asses in my comment section stop putting their foots in their mouths and stop being such arrogant know-it-all while actually knowing nothing idiots. So speaking of broken shit that never should have been approved, the magic mirror, the absolute worst card in this entire set by a long shot so this is a nine cost just kidding it's not legendary artifact mythic and this spell costs one less to cast for each instant and sorcery in your graveyard because that deck wasn't toxic ebola enough already so this is an is it card it costs three to get out and you have no maximum hand size at the beginning of your upkeep put a knowledge counter on the magic mirror then draw a card for each knowledge counter on the magic mirror 
oh, well, this could backfire because if somebody else is playing control to stop the Izzet deck and it just kind of goes nowhere, all the drakes get pinned down or blown up and all the spells do nothing and they can't burn you enough, well, eventually they're going to overdraw their entire deck and lose. Uh, no, Jace is still legal. They'll just throw him out there and of course they're going to have him in hand at some point and then when their library empties, they win because Jace was a mistake. Plus, if there is a deck in standard that has such powerful card advantage and draw that you can let a blue mix with any other color deck draw its entire library, draw the whole deck and still not win the game, that doesn't make this card fair and balanced. That means that there's two completely f***ed up decks in standard. This card is inherently, mathematically, and provably worse than Search for Azkanta, worse than Jace, worse than Teferi, and probably worse than Nexus, although you can't really compare them. I mean, drawing seven cards is kind of like taking seven turns in a row unopposed. It's close. You can do more with it, technically. I mean, self mill Resurrection Mix Black. There you go. The deck's unstoppable. The entire rest of the deck is draw, scry, and kill. Board wipes, nothing. That deck cannot be beaten. Is it color spell cloning with the magic mirror where you basically do pseudo storm count? Unbeatable because the whole deck would be counter spells and removal. Red removal. Uh, War of the Spark centric super friends. You would draw enough spells to cover them. Oh, but this one simple spell can blow up this artifact. You just need artifact removal. Well, you just need to shut the hell up because one, that's not the point. That's never been the point. That's never a valid point to say, well, this card can be stopped. Okay, so every single creature without Hexproof and Indestructible is just fine. Because one kill spell can, can take it out. I mean, don't look at the rest of the deck and the amount of control and counter spells and Hexproof and protection from the color of your choice. Yeah, I mean, don't, don't look at other ways to cover it. No, if it can be blown up, then it must not be good enough, right? They should have put Hexproof on this. You're an idiot. Try to hit this with a Naturalize against even a mono blue deck, okay? You're not going to resolve that spell. If you think they're going to cast this at a time when they can't cover it, you're an idiot. And if you think that after you emptied their hand, like that's going to happen, but oh, oh, I just burnt up two of their counter spells. My third naturalize is going to blow this up. Um, they're drawing one extra card, then two, then three, then four, then five on the next five turns. So no, unless they're the unluckiest person on the planet, they are going to outdraw you by factors you can't even imagine. I bet you we're still going to see like a card like Force Fruition 2, where it's like turbo mill. Like every time I draw a card, you mill one or two or something. Okay, Force Fruition is a terrible example. that It forces your opponent to draw seven. Oh, and also it's not on card draw, it's on spell cast. Whoops. The card's still annoying. It's just, it's, stop trying to deck somebody by giving them their entire deck in their hand. It's, it doesn't usually go well. I think I need to do an overlook but awesome on that card, except it's awful. So, okay, th this is kind of slow. Maybe there's a way to stop it. I mean, it, it doesn't say it can't be countered. They can't clone it. Uh, maybe this won't be as bad as I thought. What? What's that? I, I think I hear something in the distance. It sounds like something big and mean and monstrous stomping towards us loudly. Oh, shit. It's the proliferate monster. You forgot that was a thing, didn't you? Oh, yeah. What was the most popular proliferate deck I just saw in Arena? Oh, yeah. Super Friends which is also going to be degenerated as shit with this card. Oh, and then there's blue artifact synergy. Don't forget that one. I think there's even artifact fetch. And if they manage to blow this up, I do believe there's multiple cards at this point that can bring it back from your graveyard to either play or your hand. This cannot be stopped. It cannot be destroyed. It cannot be exiled. Um, you're never going to resolve anything that targets this. And they're just going to run you over the second this hits the field, which uh, in a self mill deck will be about turn three. So the stupidity and carelessness of just generally giving blue this much free card draw for doing nothing, paying nothing, tapping nothing, no restrictions, no requirements, it's, it's mind boggling. In a control heavy meta that's fueled by jumpstart where you get a two for one on your spells, graveyard spell count synergy, spell cloning, instant and sorcery cost reduction and lockdown card advantage control decks in multiple colors, multiple styles. This is what they're adding to that dumpster fire. What the hell were they thinking? So obviously, I mean, I feel stupider even saying this, they are going to have to ban this. Fuck this stupid card, let's move on. Let's just assume that stupid bullshit red spell and the stupid bullshit blue one we're looking at now are both going to get banned eventually after they rune standard for who the hell knows how many months.
So, okay, we've gotten past that. Let's move on with the spoilers pretending that these never happened. Well, next up, we've got Revenge of Ravens, which is a four-cost enchantment, which is basically just a Scarab's card. Whenever a creature attacks you or a Planeswalker you control, if that sounds familiar, it's on just about every damn card from War of the Spark, that creature's co controller loses one life and you gain one life. Per creature. One of the most annoying cards ever printed in the game was Light Minefield. This is Light Minefield that only hits your opponents and heals you. And it's slightly different math behind it, but still. This is pretty messed up. I mean, in a vacuum, it would just be incredibly annoying because they could only really beat you with life gain or burn or really large creatures where you just don't care that your 8-8 eight eight is dealing one damage to you and healing them for one. So let's pretend that a Johnny's Pride Mate isn't a thing. Let's uh, say that a Johnny's Company, I think, isn't a card. Let's just pretend that every card that says whenever you gain life, dot, 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 some other things. Let's pretend all that doesn't exist. Let's just ignore the fact that this is clearly a prison deck. This is clearly basically a lantern control card. It's Archangel of Ties, but worse. Because you're way more likely to have throwaway mana than you are to have throwaway life points. Let's pretend that there's nothing in the game that says whenever your opponent loses life for the first time each turn. Ignore all of that synergy that's a potential shitstorm and just focus on the fact that you can clone this multiple ways, you can easily bring it back from your graveyard multiple ways, and it's not legendary. Oops. So some dumbass over at Wizards of the Coast saw this card and thought, well, this will be kind of fun and annoying, an interesting little thing to throw down in like a draft or something. Recurring life gain triggers for free anytime your opponent tries to actually win the game. And the trigger happens before you declare blockers. It's literally an instantaneous trigger on the stack as soon as they declare an attacker. Are you kidding me? And then on top of it, it applies to Planeswalkers too. So this is just going to go in a Super Friends deck and... It's mono black three generic. It's like they're asking to have it put in a three color or more super friends deck. Stupid Kaya enchantment bullshit is still legal. Sarkon is still legal. Both of them do basically exactly this. You add all those together, it is impossible to swing at the Planeswalkers. You are going to have to cast the Elder Spell or you're going to lose. And if you think that they can't counter a spell with a multicolor super friends deck with turbo draw, you're an idiot. This card is so stupidly powerful in context of standard right now, I, I can't even believe that they printed it. If this was quad black and legendary, I'd say, okay, interesting card. But as it sits, this is completely game ruining. I mean, even just throw this into vampires, you basically can't lose. You can just throw this down and just swing every turn. Between lifelink and this, you are not going to lose. So moving on from this bullshit, even though I'm too disgusted to even look at any more of these f***ing cards, we've got Bone Crusher Giant. Oh, this one's a gem too. It's a 4-3 for 3. Its adventure is Stomp, Instant Speed, Damage Can't Be Prevented this turn, which just, all this Damage Can't Be Prevented bullshit really suggests that Fog is going to be a major mechanic. Oh, I can't wait for Turbo Fog decks. Those are fun. Damage can't be prevented this turn. Stomp deals two damage to any target at all. Wonderful. Great. I'm happy for you. Then, whenever Bone Crusher Giant becomes the target of a spell, which it will because it's a freaking 4-3 for 3, it deals two damage to that spell's controller. This could go in Burn and Creature Blitz decks and in both of them be the best card in the deck. That's completely unacceptable. This is so stupidly difficult to get rid of. I mean, just think about the trouble... And the, the amount of satisfaction you have when you finally do blow up that stupid elemental that keeps generating free mana for red right now. When you finally get rid of it, assuming they only had one in play, you're like, yes, finally, their source of limitless mana and casting seven freaking spells per turn is finally gone. They usually just cast another one or they just cast Experimental Frenzy. Or they just kill you with a Bane Fire or summon a Rekindling Phoenix. Like, standard is in such a shit state right now. There's at least 20 cards that never should have been printed, most of which are cycling, but still. And then now we've got this. F this card. Next up, we've got a 5-4 flyer for two. Look down at your phone. I'm not playing a prank on you. It is a 5-4 flyer for two in blue. Oh, Des, surely you jest. I do not, and don't call me Shirley. 
So this is an Artifact Creature Gargoyle, which just paints two targets on its back, but still. Vantress Gargoyle can't attack unless Defending Player has seven or more cards in their graveyard, which is literally just Threshold. Just, just print the word Threshold on the card. It's Threshold. I, maybe that one's a graveyard or your graveyard. Whatever. Same damn thing. It's, it, threshold sucked, and it's like an eight on the storm scale. So Vantress Gargoyle can't block unless you have four or more cards in hand. Okay, first of all, you're dropping this on turn two, so yes, you have four cards in hand. And secondly, this goes great with that other infinite draw freaking gateway to bullshit or whatever the hell that thing's called. Yeah, Magic Mirror. Okay, maybe Magic Mirror, when it opens a portal to the fucking Rainbow Radiation Land, maybe it's actually a portal to a different game. Maybe they're like trying to send you a message. That standard and R&D and the company and everything is just completely f***. And you need to abandon ship and go to a completely different realm of existence. So anyway, but wait, there's more. If you tap it, each player puts the top card of their library into their graveyard. Okay, this makes Master of Feast, which was a 5-5 flyer for 3 and let your opponent double draw you 2-1, to one, look like shit. So the only way to stop this is to blow it up super early in the game. So you're burning a removal spell on a freaking two cost permanent, or you have to be able to empty your own graveyard, your own graveyard. Who can do that? What deck can do that? I mean, I guess if you dropped it on turn two, it would be very unusual if your opponent had seven cards in the graveyard, but you could throw this in a mill deck as a backup win con. Isn't that nice? So I've got one exile card in hand. Do I exile this because I'm at 10 life because it hit me twice? Or do I exile the biggest, baddest enchantment creature, or whatever ongoing effect planeswalker that you have that's milling me to death when I have 20 cards left in my library? The answer is neither. Pick up a bar stool and hit your opponent in the face with it. That's really the only solution I can see to stop that deck is to send them a very strong and clear message that them and their bullshit aren't welcome there. Also, this is a joke slash hyperbole, don't do that. So this card can go straight back to hell. Let's see what else we've got. Oh good, Dance of the Mance. Oh good, it's some stupid pun or at bare minimum assonance. I bet this'll be good. Oh look, it's in my two favorite colors. Two plus X, sorcery, rare. Return up to X target artifact and or non aura enchantment cards, AKA everything in this entire spoiler video. Each with convert a mana cost X or less. Okay, you're not going to get the nine cost. Uh, from your graveyard to the battlefield. If X is six or more, those permanents also become four four creatures in addition to their other types. And let me just add, and they don't lose any of their abilities. So all the furniture comes to life and beats your ass, according to uh, the artwork here. Beauty and the Beast reference, maybe. I don't know. I mean, I don't remember, like, a clock and a dresser coming to beat Belle's ass in the movie, but I'm not actually sure I ever saw the movie, to be perfectly honest. So, this is pretty messed up. Um, you would never normally just say, oh, wow, I'm losing the game. This will be a great equalizer. No, you obviously self-mill. You just put a bunch of shit in the graveyard and then get it for free. Although, I've always said any free casting effect that does technically make you pay one mana for every mana cost in the mana cost, or there's probably a better way to phrase that, you're still technically paying for the spell in a roundabout way. So if they put like an artificial size limit on what you're allowed to bring out, you won't have an Elzombly incident, which is where you could just self-mill an Eldrazi in your graveyard then resurrect it. Yes, I had a deck called Elzombly. Yes, it was virtually impossible to stop. And it was blue-black and the entire rest of the deck was control. That's why it was virtually impossible to stop. Next up, if you thought the stupidity was going to stop, oh, there's no brakes on the dumb train. We've got Folio of Fancies. Oh boy, this time they went with consonants instead of assonants. How creative. Look them up. So this is a two-cost blue artifact. Oh good, I bet you can resurrect this 30 ways from Sunday and untap it, by the way, with that stupid running clock piece of shit. So players have no maximum hand size because that always goes well. Uh, you can pay double X and tap it. Each player draws X cards. Why the hell would you give your opponent the same advantage you just gave yourself? Never activate that under any circumstances in any deck type. That ability is a trap for stupid people, and then if you pay three and tap it, each opponent puts a number of cards equal to the number of cards in their hand from the top of their library into their graveyard. All good. So I guess that would be one reason to overload them, but you get the force fruition problem where if you make me draw too much out of my deck, I'm going to make my deck run at absolute optimum efficiency and kick you in the nuts with it. Oh, ha ha ha, I'm milling you out. <laughs> oh, crap, you have seven cards in hand. Oh, uh-oh. 
Yeah, next turn, board wipe, blow up all artifacts, return this to hand, frickin' summon two planeswalkers, and then three creatures. Like, you're gonna get your ass kicked. This card is actually completely idiotic. Besides being, like, the cheapest you have no max hand size that I've ever seen, although I think there might be a land that does it, um, the whole strategy and idea behind it is, is not going to work, and it mills your opponent to death incredibly quickly based on the more answers they have to your deck in their hand currently. So you might be thinking, how the hell does that work? It doesn't. So are we finally going to move on to a card that's not completely and utterly badly designed or standard breaking? <laughs> no. Stone Coil Serpent. This is an X cost 0, zero and it enters the battlefield with X11 one, one counters on it. So whatever size you want to make it, one mana per. And it has reach, and it has trample, and it has protection from multicolored. So you're all looking at this thinking, he's got to be kidding. It can't possibly say that. Uh, let's read some comments from uh, mythicspoiler.com, or as I like to call it, mythicspoiler.com. Uh, Gus Solberg says, remember Endless One with Reach, Trample, and Pro Multicolor? What the f*** this is broken? And he goes on to say, $20 rare easy, and then some idiot named Jay responded to him, I don't know about that. Um, shut the hell up, Jay. You're an idiot. I do know about that. This is going to be in every deck ever. This might even make its way to vintage. Oh, um, in case you don't think this will get worse, Steel Overseer is legal. He's getting one counter per turn. Uh, probably two or three counters, actually, because there's so many artifact on tap effects. In fact, there's so many, he basically has Vigilance. Oh, and he's not legendary. Oh, I've got good news, though. He can't technically really clone him. I mean, he would just drop dead. I mean, there are ways around it. He does have a snake subtype. Oh, and by the way, Ugin's Conjurant is still legal, just FYI. So this can be played in any color, no restrictions, any deck, any format. I would dare say that about probably 75% of the time, if you came up with a deck idea, take any perfect creature in it, take it out and put this in instead, and it'll upgrade the deck. Oh, but this, I'm building goblins, and this isn't a goblin, so it won't have any of the interactions or boosts. Doesn't need it. It's still bigger, it's still more useful, it still stops more creatures, and it still gets past more creatures. It's still better. That is the perfect benchmark to tell that this thing is completely f and they're going to have to ban it in everything. Everything. So next up, we've got another foreign card, and it's a common white land. This can't possibly be overpowered broken shit you're thinking to yourself if you're an idiot who's in denial. Land. Plains. Ooh, it's fetchable. Taps for one white. Yay! Countryside Villa enters the battlefield tapped unless you control three or more other planes. Which that, okay, this is going to be hard to play in mix. I'll give it that. If Countryside Villa enters the battlefield untapped, put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creature you control. So in other words, in a mono white life gain deck, another free counter, and there's almost nothing in the game that stops this effect. So remember, a lot of simplistic games that run very typical creature-based combat, you know, swing, biggest thing wins, some ambush, sneaky stuff, just a traditional vanilla magic deck. In most of those, and a lot of low-powered play, biggest creature wins. And, you know, as good as a plus two, plus two till end of turn in the middle of combat is... A 1-1 one, one counter stays for the rest of the game. Now that said, I do believe Loxodon will still be legal. I think that was a, an actual Selesnya card. I might be wrong. So there's that. Then there's all the tribal base boost. Then on top of that, you've got a Johnny's Pride Mate and that stupid snake. Then add in all the angels. And then add this. Which is just the icing on the cake of making all your shit way too big. So we'll say this risks being like obnoxiously powerful. But it's far from broken or unfair game ruining. It's just going to be like, oh yeah, that's a nuisance. But it's just one thing after another, after another, after another with the set of spoilers today. So I just hate this card. I hate everything about it. It shouldn't have been printed. It's too good because the decks it would go in are already too good. Otherwise, in a vacuum, this card like isn't even that good. So finally, we're at the last card in this absolute shit parade. It's Faye Burrow Elder. I'm sure this won't be overpowered garbage. Three cost, zero, zero, tree folk druid, vigilance. It gets plus one, plus one for each color among permanents you control. Hey, remember when I said they're going to do the polar opposite of devotion? I was half joking. 
but they did it and here it is and then tap it for each color among permanents you control add one mana of that color so you can actually tap this for five mana unless colorless is a color i'm not sure i think they ruled differently on that so if you destroy three other creatures and this is the last thing left it just dies so like okay cool it's in real time it's not it gets that many counters at summon this isn't that bad but the more colors you're playing the better this is and it's a ramp card on top of that that is two things you don't want to mix because i've said it before and i'll say it again and i'm going to keep saying it forever standard needs to be limited to two colors they need to just make it a rule that you cannot play three colors in standard i know you guys are like oh, that's boring i don't like low power decks okay you like decks that do everything and win everything for you shut up you stupid net deckers the world doesn't revolve around you. Some of us actually respect the color pie and the strengths and weaknesses of the individual colors. Now, I could make this a 10-minute documentary, but let me just give you a couple examples, and if you really want, go research it yourself. Um, let's see. February 2019, Arena Standard, Nexus was banned. That's in a uh, three-color or more deck. Uh, 2018, Attune with the Aether, banned. It's in a four-color deck. Uh, Rogue Refiner, four-color deck. Uh, June 2018, Aetherworks Marvel was banned. Three-color deck. January 2017, Reflector Mage Band. Uh, some people played blue-white, but I think that was a three-color deck. That was a while ago, but I'm pretty sure it was. And you know, you throw in Smuggler's Copter, which you probably shouldn't. It, almost every single standard band was because of a, a three-color or more deck. Then you add in the number of decks that should have been banned that were three-color. Oh, oh, that's a couple. So, Faber Elder. Um, I hate this card. Never should have been printed. Oh, and by the way, this card is number 380. 80 380 out of who the hell knows at this point which means i guess it's in one of the commander decks which means if you want one it's gonna be impossible to pull from a booster and probably cost triple and then on top of it every time a set comes out they risk banning this because the more sets that are legal the more likely it is that people will be able to play more colors because of more fixing and more options so this gets my a plus rating as a card investment so that's it we're done that's all the spoilers for today. You know what else is done? This fucking game. When people were just waiting and playing other games and just playing friendly kitchen table magic or playing unranked on arena or just whatever, just dicking around, wasting time, just waiting for rotation with the very first set after rotation, they've already ruined standard again and people are already looking, what, a year and a half into the future? A year into the future? Depends how you look at it. Just to wait for this horse shit to cycle out unbelievable i was tricked into thinking that this was actually going to be a good set it is not a good set it's going to completely destroy standard and they're gonna have to ban let's see what was it last time was it nine or ten cards in the last two years depends how you count it but i think it was ten it might have actually been eleven now that i think about it i'm predicting that before the the next next rotation so not the one that's in a couple weeks the next rotation before that one they're going to ban 15 cards and along with it, they're going to lose 5 million players. That's my prediction. I'm not making a point here. I'm not just saying that it's hyperbole. That is my actual prediction of what they are actually going to do to standard based on these cards alone. They are that bad, I assure you. And I would very strongly caution you against saying I'm wrong in a comment because I'm going to screenshot it and bring it up during the entire next year. The terms and conditions of the comment section on this video are that you agree to let me use your username and whatever stupid bullshit you post against you for the entire next year in as many videos as I want, and every ban and restricted announcement I am going to do exactly that. This is your only warning. So anyway, thanks for watching, you amazing people who had the fortitude to sit through 40 minutes of broken, standard-ruining, dream-shattering, other game-playing-inducing bullshit. F*** you, wizards. I'll see you guys next video.